There's still home. The throw is there and he is out at the play. Nope, he is not. And I'll tell you why. Hi everyone, Lindsay at Kletzkal Sports, and let's go over a catcher's balk interference. What's the rule here? What happened? Here we go. First and foremost is our game situation. Runners on first and third with two out. The runner on third attempts to steal home. And it sure looks like the defensive team tags the runner out. After the play, the umpires convene and we get a different ruling. You can tell by the reaction, mm -hmm. they're counting it. And and they just gonna gonna do it. Oh, bonus ejection, sweet. We saw this in another game that they apparently played inside a potato, but the rule is pretty clear, and MLB has it too, so does high school. The catcher cannot go in front of home plate or even on home plate when the pitcher is pitching the ball. Why? That's catcher's interference. Their throw is high. They thought something was on. They wanted a ball called and none called. Bobby Jones is arguing it too. In the Bobby Jones play, this is not a balk because the runner was not trying to score, but in college, get caught trying to steal one. That runner clearly is. Wow. Well, there's the a lot of drama of going on right now with this uh, umpire crew discussing whether or not that was balk and interference on the. Here's the rule. Remember, pro and high school have equivalent rules too, although high school calls it catcher's obstruction. If on an attempted squeeze play or steal of home, the catcher steps on or in front of the plate without possession of the ball or touches the batter or the bat, the pitcher shall be charged with the balk and the catcher with interference. And as the Bobby Jones play tells us, if it's just the catcher in front of home plate runner not trying to advance, it's only interference or obstruction depending on your level. It's not something you see every day. First, the attempt to steal home, but... The first thing to establish is whether or not the pitcher is pitching the ball, because if the pitcher disengages and throws home, you cannot have catcher's interference because it wasn't a pitch. The pitcher is in contact with the plate, never disengages. This is a pitch. The question is, was the, was the execution the rule on how he can receive that ball? We're looking for the catcher on or in front of home plate during pitch without the ball to call this. Think of it this way, catcher's interference is the rule designed to penalize catchers who interfere with a batter's ability to strike at a pitch. On this pitch, the catcher gets right in front of the batter while the pitch is still in the air prior to it arriving at home plate, so this batter has no chance of swinging. This is catcher's interference. Not by the reaction, mm -hmm. they're counting yeah. it, and, and, and they're just going to do it. it. Because it is a steal of home, it is also a balk by rule. I don't see him have, having stepped on or in front of the plate in that scenario, do you? Remember, catcher's interference is when a catcher prevents a batter from hitting a pitch. This batter is entirely blocked out because the catcher is in his way before the ball got to home plate. This is textbook catcher's interference. So he's in neither. fair territory towards the Yeah, pitchers. just call it fair territory. Okay. Because then you're in front of him. So then technically he was neither there. Remember, it's not hard. Catcher's interference is when the catcher prevents a batter from hitting the ball or even having an opportunity to hit it. We call it free choice. The choice of to swing or not to swing. If the catcher standing in front of the batter prevents the batter from making a free choice, that is catcher's interference. The reason that the rule is written the way it is about a runner coming on a squeeze play or a steal of home is because the rule book is referencing rule 8.2.E2, which states that if catcher's interference occurs when any runner is attempting to steal a base, that runner shall be awarded the base. So whether or not you even have a quote unquote balk here, that runner is going to be awarded home plate. The standard for catcher's interference is so much less than the home plate collision rule standard. And I think that people are conflating the two and you shouldn't do that because you might say, oh yeah, the catcher gave the runner a path to get to home plate in the same way that you would for a collision. But this is not that. This is about the batter. Catcher's interference has nothing to do with the runner. Even if it, we're talking about a runner trying to score on a steal, it has nothing to do with the runner. It has everything to do with the batter. And this batter was deprived of the free choice to swing or not because the catcher basically blocked him out when the pitch was still in motion. Obviously it becomes a judgment play, and it's just not one of the reviewable plays at this time. Because obviously it's a very complicated play. I've said it before, people can overcomplicate things, and this looks like one of those situations with the broadcast. Simplify it. Was this catcher's interference? Yes. They're getting so into the nitty gritty of where the catcher was actually positioned. Was he touching home plate? Was he over it? Was he behind it? 
Is it catcher's interference or not? If it is, that runner gets home plate because a different rule that has nothing to do with stealing home says so. A steal of home to take the lead. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Did the right thing. To review, this is catcher's interference. The runner gets home because they were attempting to steal during the interference. Keep it simple. The rulebook is super complicated and confusing and sometimes contradicting. But if you go to your definitions, the fundamentals, look at catcher's interference and determine that this batter was interfered with by opportunity of losing the free choice to hit or not hit the ball, then this call becomes so much easier because another rule says that on catcher's interference, all runners attempting to steal get the bases that they were going to steal. If the protest is upheld, you would go back to this point in the game. Oh, that's right. College allows protests. This one will be denied. You cannot protest a judgment call. But let's say they were protesting that one rule that's confusing. Take it out of the book, replace it with the other one that is also in the book. This is what the rule book does. It allows you to go through multiple avenues to reach the same exact conclusion. The runner from third, whether he's going to get home plate on a balk, or the runner from first getting second on a balk or not, is immaterial. Why? Because catcher's interference means that the batter becomes a runner and gets first base. That forces that runner on first to advance to second. No matter what happens, you have runners on first and second, and the runner from third scores a run. It's been 13 minutes to decide exactly how that play should have been ruled upon. And I don't know why. This video is only six and a half minutes long. Like and subscribe, join the channel. Get a membership, please help support our operations because MLB's been copyright claiming again. And visit us online at CloseCallSports.com. We'll see you on the site. And on the appeal, they're going to try to steal third. What a heads up play. Yeah. Huh, I thought I was going to leave, but I can't because we have an appeal play on our three at home plate. It's heads up play by LSU. They realized he didn't touch home, but what they didn't realize is that when interference or obstruction occurs during a play, the umpire can take certain actions, including awarding the runner a base touch. Furthermore, the rule about this specific play at home plate says that the run scores, not that the runner's awarded home and has to touch the base. The run scores, period. So the runner is de facto awarded that base touch, which is why this appeal fails. As for the runner at second stealing third during the live ball appeal, that's right, I said live ball appeal, that's a heads up play by him because he is trying to draw a throw from the pitcher to negate the appeal attempt at home. Why? The appeal rule says you must make an appeal prior to the next pitch, play, or attempted play. So if they had made an attempt to make a play on the runner going to third base, they, they would lose out on that window, that opportunity to make an appeal on the runner at home. Too bad they didn't know that interference allows you to give base touch awards effectively. Anywho, this is kind of weird for a sport that penalizes runners for missing home plate on home runs, but I guess the way to think about it is the defensive team screwed up. They committed interference. That's an infraction of the rule. And if an infraction occurs, the umpire takes penalty steps to nullify that infraction. And that's why that runner is awarded home and awarded that base touch, if that makes sense. All right, this time I'm gone. See ya.